Napoleon was so close now. He was in spitting distance of his family's home, and he was going to get there, come hell or high water. He prayed for his family's safety, and he hoped he would see them soon. He needed to stay positive, he needed to stay firm, he needed to keep going, for his own sake, and for theirs. Hello my fellow Spuds, and welcome back to another episode of Project Zomboid. So, we're just on the outskirts of West Point with Tony, we're so close to his family's home, and it is very cold outside. Yep, it's a <laughs> instantly horrific wind chill, feeling more than 20 degrees cold than it actually is. Minus 34 already, we're instantly chilly as anything as soon as we step outside. It's not very good at all, so we're going to want to basically take our time. I think we there's not that many buildings between here and there, so we're going to probably want to play it safe. I think we're going to just nip to these buildings over here, just while we're waiting for the wind chill to die off a little bit. We'll then make our way up slowly but surely towards his parents' house and go from there. But I'm hoping this episode we should be able to get there. It's not that far anymore. It should be within walking distance within a day in this, so it should be fine. But as it being this cold, a little bit worrying. I don't really want to push it too much because at this point we could just walk into a blizzard and we could just die. So I don't really want that to happen. So we'll, uh, we'll take it nice and slow. Nice and steady. We'll see if we can find anything else while we're out and about around here. And uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll keep pushing on. I did anything in this shed. Let's go have a look at that house there, seeing as it's so close by. Oh, there's actually quite a few zombies. And we'll try and weigh out this storm a bit. And then at that point, we'll, uh, we'll push on after that. Actually, quite a few. Um, didn't expect there to be this many. Oh well. Keep going. The more zombies we can clear in this general area, the better, really, for Tony's family. So, oh, and Long Blunt's gone up. Excellent. That should help a little bit. Diamond ring, don't mind if I do. I can't hear zombies. Let's let these. How many are there? No, way too many. Um, come on, can we take these two out before they break down the door? Probably not. Right, quickly run. Any food, any food, any food at all. Crap, no, go. Okay. Uh, a bit of a waste of time. Fine. <laughs> uh, horrific wind chill. But shit out, Tony. That house is cursed. <laughs> That's a lot of zombies. Okay. So, we uh, we gave it our best, but I don't think we're going to get any further than that. I think we're just going to have to suck it up and make our way over to his parents' house. Is that road? That must be road. Right, okay. Not far now. So nearly there. Oh, and it's actually warmed up a little bit. It's only uncomfortable wind chill now. That's all right. <laughs> it's a little bit better, I guess. Ooh. Hang on. Is that a car? I know we're so close, but we might as well. <laughs> We've been checking out the cars when we can. And uh, I can only see one zombie. And we've got an ambulance key. A little bit of gas, no battery. I think that means the battery's dead. There is a tiny bit of gas in here, but I will check quickly. Battery is dead. Fine. Okay, well, nice to know it's there, though. This is actually a really nice, peaceful little walk. A nice way to uh, just let Tony think about everything. Let him stew about what he might find coming up. Won't be long. Counting down the meters at this point. Check out this car. Nope. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Ew. There were zombies. Honestly surprised. I thought we would see a lot more. I think if we'd gone through the middle rather than the road, we might see more. But fairly calm, fairly chill. And this is why this area is so good. And this is why Tony wanted to come back here. There's barely anyone around. 
There's no reason for zombies to drift this way. And there it is. The road leading to Tony's parents' house. What will we find? We'll see. But uh, straight away, there's a couple of cars. If we can find a working battery here, I, I might I might scream. Or at least muffle a scream. <laughs> no. No gas. No nothing. Fine. Uh, engine battery zero. Gas tank zero. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little pond. We're here. Tony can hear his heartbeat. Heart's in his ears. He doesn't know what to expect. He has to press on. He has to see. He can't turn around now. He can't abandon his family now. He has to keep going. And there it is. Tony's family's home. His dad's old runner's still out front. It looks like the place has been barricaded, though. I think that's probably a good sign. I hope. God, it's all really fortified, isn't it? Jesus. How are we going to get in here? Oh. Oh, God. As Tony gazes upon the graves, he can't help but become overwhelmed. So many graves. So many bodies. And upon one of them, he sees a pair of glasses. They're his dad's spectacles. He has a moment. He knows this means his father is buried here. And most likely his mother too. But he can't give up hope yet. To go into the house. Face whatever's in there. Guns and ammo. Line the front in a defensive position. Clearly well protected. And ready for a fight. Blood stains litter the floor. Furniture everywhere blocking every entrance. Every exit. The staircase destroyed. The sheet rope leading upstairs. Tony doesn't know what to expect. He's not sure whether there's going to be anyone here. More beds than he remembers line the walls. Why are there so many beds in here? He knows on the side table. The chocolate, pickles, shortbread. All left uneaten, but clearly still fresh. There's one last room. There's a silent prayer holds his breath and steps in. The unknown. Before him, his daughter stands there, clad head to toe in winter gear, holding a plank ready to beat his skull in. He's overwhelmed. He doesn't know what to say. Worth cannot express how happy he is. He goes in to embrace her, but Lucy steps back. Stay back. Morning, you. Bash your skull in like I did the others. Tony takes off his gas mask to show her. It's me, Dad. At this point, Lucy breaks down, tears rolling down her cheeks. Did come back. I knew you would. Tony has so many questions. So much to ask, so much to say. The only thing that can come into his mind at this point, however... For some reason, was the guitar. He has no idea what to say. All he can do is apologise and hands over the guitar. Lucy doesn't really know what to say. Completely out of the blue, he cracks a smile and laughs. He laughs hard. So does Tony. As Lucy wipes away the tears, she says it's the first time she's laughed in a long time. And she invites her dad to sit down and listen to her tale. Lucy describes what went on the last few months. Well, Tony's dad got sick before the start of the infection. How on Tony's last job, it passed. But when he passed, was when all hell broke loose. And people started to turn. Zombies started to come. Lucy and her grandmother took in refugees from nearby houses and set up a little settlement in their house. They were fine at first, but when the winter hit, people started to suffer. Some went off looking for better shelter, some went off looking for family, and some succumbed to the zombie hordes. One by one, they each perished, until it was just Lucy and her grandmother. Lucy described her grandmother's last day. They were taking stock of their inventory, making sure they had enough food to last. They had a fair amount from looting the nearby houses, and when the others left, they'd left a lot of food behind. They thought with rationing and some fishing, they probably had enough to last the winter. They couldn't say for certain. Lucy's grandmother said that she was going to go out, see if she could forage some berries, but she didn't notice a zombie lurking in the woods. Before Lucy could say anything, the zombie quickly took a chunk out of her grandmother's shoulder. Lucy managed to beat it away, but it was too late. Her grandmother had been bitten. Badly. She was bleeding heavily, and she didn't know what to do. Lucy said her last words were how she was proud of her granddaughter. She was proud of how she turned out. But she also said but she also said to tell her son he ever came back home to find them, that she forgave him, that his father had also forgiven him for the wrongs he had done. They knew that he was trying to make right with everything he'd done wrong over the past 20 years. They knew they'd seen it. They'd witnessed it. But they themselves couldn't face the shame of turning their own child away. They couldn't face seeing him again. They said that they regretted the last time they spoke, a few months ago, when Tony had announced what he was planning, and had said goodbye. She said that they wished that he would stay, so they could become a family again, and how they wished that they'd insisted upon it. But they'd held their tongues and let him go. But she said she hoped that one day her son would forgive them for turning him out 
and not supporting him more. And that was when she passed, and her eyes shut. Lucy was prepared for what would happen next, and when she saw her grandmother's eyes slowly open once more, she was ready, gun in hand, stood over her. She said it was the hardest thing she's ever done in her life, but it was over so quickly. She looked at her dad and just apologised, and said she couldn't do anything else for her. Tony said it was okay, and that he was here now. Tears streaming down his face, he'd finally got closure. If not from his parents directly, he still knew what his daughter said was true. He felt the weight lift from his shoulders for the first time in 20 years. He knew that he would sleep soundly tonight. He realised that his daughter was safe. And although his parents had died, at least his father had avoided suffering, and his mother's pain had been quick. But for now, Tony was going to go to sleep. He was exhausted after his long journey, and he and his daughter would make plans in the morning what to do next. Right, it's the morning, everyone. So, I'm glad we got in here when we did. Jesus, minus 18 in here. It's inside. It's like a blizzard outside. It does not look very nice. I'm so glad we got here when we did. Jesus. Okay, well, Tony did it. He got back to his parents' place. Well, it looks like Lucy had a fair amount of food stored in here. So what have we got? We've got some cans of corned beef, some fruit cocktails, some tuna, some cupcakes, and some chocolate chips. And on the chair, some spaghetti bolognese. That's not too bad. You've got quite a lot of food, actually. It's a bit of a dark tale, really. We got here, but it looks like Tony's parents already succumbed. I suppose at least his dad died before the actual outbreak itself kind of took hold. Very sad about his mum, but at least it was quick. It wasn't painless, but at least it was quick, I guess. Let's have a look around. What have we got in here? So we've got quite a lot of beds. So presumably from when all when, uh, they took in... Oh, some axes. Nice. Now I'm presuming that Lucy has a shovel, seeing as she was able to dig all those uh, graves out back. Have a look. Oh, okay, cool. Right, so there's some rope, some hammers, loads of hammers. Axes, some nails, glue, screwdriver, nice. Uh, what have we got here? Crafted spear, axe. We've got the fireplace going, which is nice. Some tailoring books. Not a huge amount else. We'll look in here. We've got radio, shovel. Ooh. Oh my god, yes. Shovel and a sledgehammer. That's amazing. Rich sheets. Okay, so... There's not much here. I mean, we got a shovel and a sledgehammer, which is incredible. Uh, we're going to need to figure out what's our next step. It's uh, it's mid-August. It's getting cold. It's getting very, very cold. I think it's going to be the case that we're going to have to bunker down, see how long we can survive here, I guess. We've got the fishing stuff with us. We could go and see what else is in these houses. I'm not sure how much... Oh, that one's burnt. I didn't even notice that. We could go have a look and see what else. I don't think there's going to be much seeing as it looks like most of the furniture from the other houses has also been used. We can go see, I guess. Right, Lucy, you stay here. We're going to just nip out quickly, see if we can find anything else. Won't be long. God, horrific wind chill. Minus 20. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Uh, we're feeling a little bit sad. We're extreme panicked. We're hungry. Yeah, that's fine. I kind of want to see if we can get into this car. I don't know whether it's going to be open or not. Lucy's not sure, seeing as it hasn't actually been used for a long time. Yeah, no battery. Uh, any gas? No. Okay. There's a garbage bag. Okay, well, we're getting cold, so let's go have a look at the other houses quickly. Check out the unburnt one first, I guess. And then we'll check out the burnt one and behind, because behind there, I believe, is where the lake is. Let's have a little look. Have I got a pickaxe? Seriously? Okay. Uh, might take that with us in a sec. Screwdriver, very broken screwdriver. Yeah, it looks like most of the furniture has been used for the, uh, the stuff over there. There's not much here. Trapping guide, that might be quite good. Take that with us. I think I can hear a zombie. Uh, tank top empty bucket might be quite good. Okay, there's a duffel bag. Clearly not the best at, um, oh, take the umbrella. That might be quite good. Clearly not the best at carpentry. They haven't been one successful first time. As Tony beats in the face of the zombie, he recognises his old next-door neighbour, Bill Maguire. He's aged since he last saw him, but still the same. He feels guilty as he smashes the crowbar into his skull, and knows it's for mercy more than anything else. Well, not much in here, then. Let's go scout out the other place. If there's anything else. Does Umbrella do anything against the cold? Ridiculously windy, it probably have an adverse effect. I don't really want to be out here in this. This is horrendous. Right, Tony, just get inside. It's like basically minus 40 with a horrific wind chill. Um, <laughs> okay, there's a 
cooking pot with water and a water bottle just lying there. Okay, uh, we'll take the cooking pot with water. That actually might be quite useful. What we're going to want to do first of all really is we need to go and grab that antique furnace. There is a little hunting lodge that Tony knows about just across the lake that should have plenty of supplies. Uh, we're probably going to want to go there after this uh, awful, awful storm has finished. Let's go back for the time being. We can actually dump some of our stuff for the first time in a long time. Surviving the winter is going to be interesting without a generator. But we do have the fireplace in here, which will help significantly. And if we can get an antique oven as well, that would be amazing. So that's go back upstairs. Make sure Lucy's all right. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? You right with your guitar? Practicing? Hope you like it. Because, uh, yeah, Tony risked his life to get that guitar. You, be you better be, uh... Oh, there's guns. You should probably hide the hottie Z's from Lucy. That might be a bit awkward to uh, explain to her. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> we'll uh, put these away. We've got lots of stuff just to chuck away as well. The tent kit, uh, fishing rods and stuff can all go in. All right, so which, bed which bedroom should... Uh, only have then i guess that's gonna be lucy's because yeah that's the one we found her in so i guess we'll uh, we'll claim this one then what have we got in here we've got walking cane oh it's clearly his parents room wasn't it put the hotties ease in there he doesn't need to know about them we've got first aid and tailoring here that would be good to learn Mate, it's a shame we don't have carpentry or something that would be really helpful to have but oh well it doesn't matter right that's uh maybe chuck the food in this uh filing cabinet that might be good man we should probably see about chopping down some trees and getting some more wood and stuff for the fire. Is there some logs and stuff nearby? It looked like there might be. Let's have a quick gander. Yeah, there's already quite a few logs. How many? Uh, eight. Like, 14. A couple of branches of newspaper. Okay, so we got some stuff to start burning. That's good. Is there anything in this cupboard here? Okay, some old clothes. I think we're going to have to brace the storm chop down some trees. Might as well. We don't have a huge amount else to do, really. I don't really want to go find an antique stove in this. Okay, and this one, I think that'll be enough. That's a, that's a good amount of logs. That should keep us going for a couple of days. And Tony can finally sit down in a nice warm house for a little bit. Okay, we've got lots of logs there to keep us uh, occupied for a while. We can't carry any more. We can only carry four logs. Uh, but that's something. I did see a couple of rope in there, so we could probably use them at some point. Let's go in. Let's light the fire. Let's, uh, let's get the house all nice and toasty. Right, here we go. So, uh, add fuel. One, two, four. Add the tree branches. Right, so if we look at 26 hours it's got. Right, let's light this. Uh, lighter with twigs and lighter. Oh, look at that. Oh, 24 degrees. Actually positive. This is nice. This is really nice. Right, just sit on the ground. This is what you've been waiting for, Tony. This is what you've been waiting for. Just to sit down, relax next to the open fire, in the wall, and just chill out. You did it, Tony. You did it. You got here. You found your daughter. She's safe. She's better than safe. She seems pretty well prepared, actually, for the apocalypse. Hopefully, we can keep this up. Everything is good. We just need to get a massive stockpile of logs. We need to get lots of branches, twigs, you name it. We need to, we need to get prepared. There's not much around here. That's the perks of being here. But there are some houses down the road a little way away. So at least we've got something to loot. Got some farmhouses and bits like that. We're probably going to want to go out there, see what we can find. Hopefully we can find some more books. We can find some carpentry stuff. We can get our skills up. We can basically just start getting a uh, buckle down and prepared for winter. We've got a few bits to do. We need to go get this antique furnace. And we can have that upstairs with us. So then we've got eating upstairs and downstairs. I think what we should do is we should just relax a little bit we'll wait for the storm to blow over and then in the morning we'll set off to go have a look at this little forester shack in the woods take what we can from there and then we'll uh finish setting up in here right it's the morning let's keep the fire burning for a bit i think it'd be good for the house at this point let's go the storm is still raging out there but we need to crack on jesus it's nearly minus 50 and it's horrific wind chill this is more what like winter's like it gets down to minus 80 in winter in this. So, uh, yeah, this isn't even that bad at the moment. We're fine. As long as we do a little bit of running, we're fine. But we are going to want to be on our toes in case there are zombies in the woods. You never know. There might be the odd one. So if Tony remembers rightly, it is just down here. Here we go. This looks like it. Ben's cabin. Get in. 
Okay. Fishing net and fishing tackle. Useful. Oh, I've already got trapping one. That's annoying. I suppose we could take... Or do we need foraging too? Might be useful. I'll take the books. Be good on those awful winter days. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, we need a hammer? You serious? Oh, we came all this way and we didn't bring a hammer. Oh, damn it. Okay. Right, well, I might just come back off camera then and do it. Got the mounted deer trophy anyway. There we go. And boom. Okay, equipment primary. Good stuff. Right. Now we're fine. Let's get out of here. Get back to Lucy, set it up. And then we're not limited by the which floor we're on. Yeah, we're going to have to get our fishing up as well doing all this. Because uh, we have no skills apart from sneaking. So we're going to have to get our fishing up now. And our foraging a little bit. Uh, should we do a little bit of foraging? No focus. Uh, firewood, I guess. Third radius 3, weather effect, minus 61. Darkness, minus 29. Clothing, minus 20. Oh, God. Bonus radius, minus 1. Oh, this isn't good. Yeah, so just stop. Just stop. There's no point in that. Uh, let's just get back in. We'll uh, set the antique oven down and we'll be all right. Uh, Lucy, where do you want the oven? Where, like here? We should probably actually have it near our bedrooms, shouldn't we? That'll be good. And then it'll keep warm for both bedrooms. There we go. Sorted. Right, Luce, if you want to... Uh... Where have you gone? You keep disappearing on me. Oh, Luce. In grandparents' bedrooms again. Well, that's horrendous, isn't it? How are you liking the guitar? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get back to it. <laughs> okay. Right. So we've also got this deer trophy that I obviously had to have. But uh, let's place that there. Right. We're going to want to go grab some more logs. Get the rope out of here. Wherever it is. There we go. Get the hand axe. We'll do a bit more chopping. A bit more choppy choppy. And can we unpack those logs? I presume they use rope or sheet rope to do that. Yeah. Okay. That's quite a lot of rope that we've got now, which is good. Look at all those logs. Beautiful. I'll keep us going for a few days. Ah. Yeah, because it's like six hours each. So that's like three days. One of that we've got. And plus one, we've got all these. That'd be amazing. Let's uh, stack them. That's another... Another four? Can't get any more than that, apparently. Uh, Ribbon primary, then? There we go. Okay, we did it. Excellent. I think that's as much as we can carry. That's a decent amount of logs. That's like another what? Uh, four, eight, twelve logs. I'll do. <laughs> that's nearly another three days' worth. So we've got about a week's worth of wood now, which is good. 24 hours. That'll do. Right. We got back. We found Lucy. We have set up shop we've started hunkering down ready for winter i think next episode what we can do is we can do a little bit of scouting around we might bring lucy with us we might just leave her here she might be more safe here to be honest just minding the fort it doesn't look like she's been out for a long time so it might be best just to keep her there for the time being especially in this weather it's absolutely horrendous we'll do a little bit of scouting out see if we can loot any more find any more books we'll try and level up our fishing our carpentry a little bit and yeah just get nice and settled ready for the long winter so thank you so much for watching guys uh if you like with him please leave a like and subscribe a massive thank you to all my patrons seth but ola Seth, drew clint david aaron dale mikhail emma de blar gray kalara daniel dama len wolf aj andrew mitch mbh nexus law we know tk house tall man blue Aris, alex and rimmer thank you so much guys you guys are just the best thank you so much for supporting me in the channel so thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one cheers bye bye